Uh, obviously, we are here to honor some very special guests in the room, our Teachers of the Year. Um, but we could not put this type of event on without the help of our community partners. Um, so at this time, I would like to recognize the presenting sponsor of tonight's event, the Knox Education Foundation. Knox Education Foundation is a key partner for our district and their support has made this evening possible. So if you will, please join me in watching a brief video from Mike Taylor, the CEO of KEF. Congratulations, educators. You are gathered here this evening because you represent excellence. And our goal at Knox Education Foundation is to champion excellence in Knox County Schools. Teachers play the most important role in a child's success in the classroom. We see you, we appreciate you, and we are here to support you. We join you in wanting all students to reach their fullest potential of academic achievement. That's why Knox Education Foundation drives innovative partnerships and initiatives aim to support and empower teachers and help students succeed. Those initiatives include supporting the 865 Academies. As the convening organization, we identify and recruit businesses and community stakeholders who are committed to supporting this transformative, community-connected learning model with their time and talent. One Book Read City, a community-wide literacy initiative that engages all Knox County Elementary School students. PlaySpace Fund, a private-public partnership to reinforce the importance of play and provide an innovative funding solution to create and support standardized play spaces across the district. Priority-based grants that provide financial support to projects that accelerate student learning, address a challenge, or promote innovative ideas that align with educational priorities and have measurable outcomes. We support initiatives that invest in current and future educators promoting clear pathways to the classroom and offering meaningful opportunities for professional growth. We work to spark innovation, leverage data-driven strategies, and advance bold ideas to foster a culture of continuous improvement in our schools. We join Knox County Schools teachers in setting high expectations for students and believe that every student and all schools can achieve educational excellence. Knox Education Foundation is a champion for public education and a catalyst for its transformation. And that means we are a champion for you, our educators. We invite you to learn more and connect with us at knoxed.org and on Facebook. We cheer you on today and every day for the phenomenal, important work you do. Thank you for pursuing your calling as an educator. I would like to ask Mike if he would come up to the podium and accept an award on behalf of CAF. Another one of our sponsors this evening is TRAIN. So I would like at this time to ask for a member of the TRAIN organization to please come forward and accept a token of our appreciation. Next, we have American Fidelity. So we know our, our good friend Trey, we'll ask him to come forward. And next we have Adam Wilson from Outen Wilson Realty. And last but not least, 
Adam, if you don't mind, to accept an award for Partners in Education. He's this year's president, so Partners in Education. Okay, so if we could, just one more round of applause for our sponsors that helped to make this event possible. At this time, I would like to introduce our Assistant Superintendent of Business and Talent, Jennifer Himmelgarn, who will make a very special recognition tonight. Thank you, Kim. It's an honor to be here this evening. I have the privilege of leading our business and talent department, and it's inspiring to see so many of our great educators here in the room with us tonight. One of our top priorities is to recruit and retain the best educators in Tennessee, and your work is a testament to the impact that our educators have on the classroom and on the school. We're also excited, as Kim said, to have some new guests with us here tonight. Um, we have our, some students and former students from the Teaching as a Profession program um, at Hardin Valley Academy. Um, the Teaching as a, as a Profession program provides coursework and mentorship and sets our current students up um, for opportunities to learn about theory and gain experience to put them a step ahead when they begin their college courses. And our hope is that many of these students return home to us in KCS. In fact, Angelina Cicero and Valeria Cavarubius, both former TAP students, are well on their way to teaching in KCS. Angelina and Valeria are both completing um, clinical placements in Knox County Schools. So if Dana Sherrill, one of our great educators, and all of our current and former TAP students would stand, let's show them our appreciation. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to introduce our Assistant Superintendent of Academics, Dr. Keith Wilson, who will say a few words and introduce our next speaker. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm excited to be here tonight and to have the chance to address the group and just want to start by expressing my thanks and my admiration for the teachers that we're here to celebrate tonight. Each of you in this room are amazing examples of what I consider to be Knox County School's most important asset, which is our teachers. I'd also like to thank the family members and the guests of these educators, some of which are also joining us tonight. You provide these educators with love and support. You may have even graded a paper or two on the weekend along the way, maybe cut out some materials to help your teacher catch up or get ahead. Uh, we recognize the, the love and the work that you put into your folks. Um, teaching is a profession that requires you to give of yourself, and we all need people in our lives that fill our cup when it gets empty. So thank you for supporting the educator in your life. Um, an American philosopher, Sidney Hook, once said, everyone who remembers his own education remembers teachers, not methods and techniques. The teacher is the heart of the educational system. And if you go back, you can probably go back to a teacher in a classroom in your own mind that exemplifies this quote. As a student at Fulton High School, I remember Mr. Tom Spray, a big man with a ponytail and a long beard, a retired Boeing engineer who came back to be a high school teacher because, and I quote, they weren't teaching kids anything in school anymore. <clears throat> a physics teacher, he never taught a concept that didn't come with a story, usually a real life tale from his work at Boeing, or in the Saudi Arabian oil fields, and sometimes from his experience as a race team engineer, which he did for fun. And most stories came with a drawing to illustrate the physics problem to be solved. He taught us to think and to do math with pictures, arrows, and sumo wrestlers. S sorry, you kind of had to be there for that last part. Um, he was unorthodox, he was outside the box. I'm sure he was not the easiest person to manage or supervise. But man, was he passionate about what he taught and about us learning. Decades later, and now leading academics in the district, I get to spend a lot of time thinking about the best strategies and classroom practices, looking at data and outcomes, and ensuring that we're doing our best to prepare and support our educators across the district to meet student needs. But even if we do all of our work well, 
I never lose sight of the fact that no good thing happens in the classroom without a teacher that connects with kids and brings their passion and talent to the table each and every day. We know what you do day in and day out is our best chance at a better future for kids and a better future for our community. We encourage you to keep making a difference. With that, I will turn it over to our superintendent, Dr. John Ricewood. Thank you, Keith. Uh, great seeing everyone here tonight. Uh, lots of times being superintendent, uh, we get to wrestle with lots of problems and challenges. <clears throat> so attending tonight uh, is a great chance for me to recharge my batteries uh, because uh, I'm so refreshed by celebrating the people who actually do the work, you the teachers. So uh, it's always a great night when we look ahead and kind of see things. Uh, it's always great to see you guys and I've enjoyed getting, kind of getting around to the tables and talking to you guys. Seeing a lot of you out when I'm out at schools uh, and, and your principals point to the great work you're doing. So uh, it's, it's great to have everybody here to celebrate tonight. Uh, when you get a shout out from your principal or even from the district, that's pretty cool. But tonight, what's so special is this is a recognition by your peers. Uh, these are other teachers in your building that do the work and know what it takes to do the work uh, who are actually have said, hey, you know, you're, you're a star among us. And I think that means a lot when your peers recognize you for that. Uh, you know, I can't get up here and not talk about the four priorities. So I'm going to do that because I have to. But uh, as you know, our district has committed itself to four priorities, excellence and foundational skills, great educators in every school, career empowerment and preparation success for, and success for every student. Uh, you know, we say those a lot. We have those. They're kind of all on there. But, but really, you know, you guys know this too. We believe in these priorities, and we believe that these are the roadmap for every student to be successful. Uh, we also recognize, as Keith just said too, that teachers are the most important lever we have to lead all this change in the classroom. I thought Keith said that very well. All of these things and ideas that we put together are just ideas without the person in the classroom. And if you strip it all away, a teacher in a classroom, kids will still learn, uh, and we, we really appreciate that. So uh, we can't achieve any of these priorities. We've set some lofty goals without what you do in the classroom every day. Uh, but I also want to want to point to some of the results that these are working early on for us. So uh, your efforts are being fruitful for us. Uh, as you know, our, our TCAP scores last year increased in every tested area. That's a pretty big deal when you think about all of the classrooms across all of the grade levels, across all of the state tests. Uh, that means your work definitely worked. Uh, and I think this one's kind of another number, too, that stands out a lot. Uh, this year, we significantly increased our reward schools. So for those of you, I think, who know reward schools are kind of that top tier recognized by the state. We had 24 reward schools this year, up from nine last year. Uh, that's pretty incredible. Yeah, that's definitely worth the applause. And at the core of this, we know and we're not confused. That success happens every day. I say this all the time. The school system is not me. Uh, the school system is you who open the car doors every day, who talk to your, your families every day, who work on those lessons every day. You're the reason we're having the success for our students, and we appreciate that. Um, so we realize that it takes more than just this annual dinner to express our appreciation, and we've worked uh, proactively to increase teacher compensation. So we'll go ahead and talk a little bit about budget over the last couple of years. Uh, we are currently in the middle of our budget planning season, uh, and this year we'll present, an additional, we'll present an additional challenge, as a lot of you know in classrooms. The federal dollars, the stimulus dollars are rolling off this year. We've kind of had that for three years and it's been there. Uh, but I want to tell you that we do remain committed, and I know our board has continued to remain committed, to increasing teacher compensation even in next year. Uh, so it is the right thing to do, and I hope that, that we'll be able to continue and send this message to you through compensation that we do believe in the work you do and that we do see you every day. Um, we're also trying to think more strategically about our budget and how we align the, the district's overall compensation to our four priorities. So as you know, we've embarked on a salary study over the last few months. As we begin to see the results from this survey, uh, we're determined, and again, I know the board as well, to find a way to, pop, to pay all of our district employees at market value. Uh, that's not going to be an easy feat. I talked to principals about that a couple weeks ago, uh, but we're going to get there because we are our employees, you, you our employees, deserve that, uh, and it's very important for us. So I know it's been a priority of our board and of our staff as well. So you'll be hearing a lot more about that in the coming months uh, on the compensation front, but I want you to know that we're very committed to making that happen. All right, with that, I'll change to introduce our speaker for tonight. Uh, very, very fortunate that he came to, to speak. Um, Matt Schaefer uh, is our speaker tonight. He joined East Tennessee Children's Hospital as the president and, CTO, and CEO uh, in August of 2020. 
He previously served in a variety of senior leadership roles in Children's Hospital in New Orleans and Texas Children's Hospital in Houston. Uh, I think I speak for everyone in the room uh, saying how grateful we are to have East Tennessee's Children, Children's Hospital here. Uh, I'm sure all of us can tell stories of our own personal selves that have been impacted by, I know I can as a dad of two, uh, that have been impacted by that, but I know if not, you know a family that has been impacted as well. Uh, so we know how important they are to our community uh, and a partner of ours as well. Uh, I know that they, they are also, we, we work with that too. Fantasy of Trees is their big fundraiser that they have every year. So if anyone has any additional tips on how we can decorate trees and continue to do that, we'll do it. So uh, with that, I'll bring Matt up, our speaker. Thank you. I am not six foot whatever you are, Dr. Reiswick, so I'm going to adjust the microphone down. Uh, thank you for having me this evening. Um, I'll try to keep my comments brief. Uh, I'm delighted to be here. Um, as Dr. Reiswick said, my name is Matt Schaefer. I have the privilege of serving as President and CEO this evening, uh, at uh, East Tennessee Children's Hospital here. been here almost four years, uh, and it's neat to be in a room full of people that you can pick out and you know them from somewhere else. Uh, I, I just had this awkward moment. I apologize for doing that. But I'm from Houston, Texas, right? It's the third largest city in America, right? And you can go to dinner and not know anyone for weeks, right? And to be in this community and to be part of a community that feels like a community uh, in a really significant way is unique. And I, and I hope you guys know that. Um, so why the heck am I here? I, I don't really know. So I'm going to try to wing it. Uh, I'm a graduate of Texas A&M University, uh, and later, oh, whoa, yes, I love it, um, and later Rice University, uh, I'm not sure whether I went up or down when I changed, um, uh, but maybe more importantly, I'm a product of public school education, um, graduate of Alden Independent School District in Houston, Texas, which is uh, top 50 enrollment about 75,000 students, right? I think there's about 60,000 students, right, at uh, Knox County Schools. Uh, maybe more importantly, I'm the son of a 30-year-plus kindergarten and pre-kindergarten teacher. Um, and she loved her work. I'm going to touch on that in a minute. I'm also the son-in-law uh, of a 30-year-plus fifth-grade instructor who taught uh, American history and social studies in Houston, Texas. Uh, so I've been in and around the teaching profession all my life, including the beginning of your rush, right, which happens, and you're trying to set up your rooms, and mom's like, son, I know you want to enjoy your, your summer, but hey, you got to come and you got to carry tote trays. Anybody remember tote trays? Right, that was a thing, right, and she had everything in tote trays. Um, but it, it, maybe most importantly for those of you in the room, I'm the father of two Knox County, uh, Knox County School students. I have a freshman at Bearden High School uh, and a uh, junior at Farragut High School. They are almost 15 tomorrow uh, and 17 later this May, and they have loved their experience here. So to you who have made that experience possible, and we got here in 2020, right, Rocky Road for everybody, right, and even through that period, they loved being able to be in schools, to be connected, right, even when things were hard and challenging. Certainly for you, that was the case. Uh, and as a father uh, of them, I want to thank you for what you do for them. Um, so I want to go back before I go forward because our world moves swift, right? We forget what happened two hours ago. And we're already worried about what's going to happen two hours from now. You're already worried about how long is he going to go so we can move on, right? <laughs> So sometimes you, you miss the idea that, you know, it is true that the windshield is larger than the rearview mirror, right? And it's that, that concept is to keep focused on what's next. But what that shouldn't mean is that you don't look at the rearview mirror, right? The rearview mirror is important, right? Dr. Reiswick just talked about where we've been and where the school system is going. You have to be able to balance both. So I'm going to break protocol because a year ago, a number of you gathered in this room and you had a number of honorees. Don't forget those honorees from last year. Right? I think the three honorees for Teacher of the Year were Jill Wise uh, from Moreland Heights, David Gronto from Holston Middle, and Rebecca Nutter from Bearden High School, who happens to be teacher of my youngest daughter. So if anybody has Sarah or Allison Schaefer and they're, they're acting up, you can let me know. Um, you know, we need to be able to say 
be in the moment, but we need to be able to recognize the moments before that made this moment possible. That makes the next moment possible as well. So, you know, why am I here tonight? Uh, I thought about that a lot. You know, I have a story of public school education, being around teachers all my life with my mother and her friends, my mother-in-law and her friends. Um, in, in some ways, the, the mission of children's and the mission of KCS is very similar, right? You are invested in educating and equipping the next generation to make them the best version of themselves, whatever that looks like. Right? We're invested in hopefully transitioning children into healthy children who are vibrant and able to be able to produce at whatever level that means in our community. Right? We're focused just like you on kids, only kids, all kids, all the time. Right? That's your mission as well. Kids, only kids, all kids, all the time, no matter what their background is, no matter what their capabilities are or their uh, capabilities are not, to define success in the best way possible for them. And I appreciate that as a father. I appreciate that as a member of this community. So in addition to that, maybe the similarities of our mission, uh, what I'd like to leave you with is some encouragement because your work is hard. It's really hard, right, because you've got to deal with crazy parents, right? We can laugh about it. They're real, right? I've probably been one of them at some point, right? You got to deal with kids, right, who are going through all stages of different things in their own development. They're also going through whatever is happening in their home environment. When they walk through the doors in the first thing in the morning, they bring that with them, right? Uh, whether those are good things or bad things, and that's really difficult. So four things of encouragement uh, maybe I can provide this evening. You know, number one, don't forget that your sacrifice and service, it matters to our community. It matters to me as an individual of a couple of students. It matters to overall 60,000 plus students, right, in the district, uh, 9,000 plus employees. You know, the concept of teaching is an interesting concept, right, because it's designed in some ways as a unilateral transfer from me to you, right, where you have value to be able to impart on me some knowledge, some wisdom that I didn't know before, or help me conquer a task that I didn't know, know before without any expectation that there's anything in return. Right? In, in that concept is, is a very noble thing, and teaching has always been viewed as a noble thing, right? Because you're investing of yourselves things that you have equipped yourself with, and you're investing it in others. And, and so that allows them to invest in others. That leads to more capable human beings, it leads to a more capable and prepared community. And God willing, it leads to better people, right? Whatever that looks like. So second, um, whether you realize it or not, your inspiration allows inflection points. If Dr. Gerald Westbrook, my senior English teacher, knew that I was standing in front of a room giving a speech, he'd be like, that knucklehead? Like, really? But I remember Gerald Westbrook. He was a great teacher. He invested in me. I could do math like nobody's business, but the English language was not a strong suit. It may still not be a strong suit, but it's a little stronger than it was before. And your investment and inspiration allows things to happen that you didn't think possible. Now, the challenge as teachers is you may not get to see that instant gratification. Right? Sometimes that doesn't come for years later. That's why I like to mow my own grass, right? Because you can mow a row of grass and you go, look, I accomplished something, right? In your world, it's squishy, it's hard, it's nonlinear, but I promise you, there are students, maybe like the students who stood up earlier, maybe others that are making a difference in their lives because of your interaction with them. They could tell that story. There is a Gerald Westbrook for everyone in some ways. There is a Miss Perkins for my oldest child in some ways. So don't forget that your inflection point uh, impact is big. Number three, um, your love is irreplaceable. I use that word specifically because my mother, um, she taught kindergarten for years and years and years. It was a challenging social environment in the school that she worked with. There weren't as many parents that were involved as you would have wanted it to be. And every day at the end of the day, and I witnessed this multiple times, she would tell each child as they went home, thank you and I love you. And those weren't just words to her. She meant it. 
Right? She bent it so much that I spent time in her class one year, and she had a student named Lloyd. I will leave his last name out. Um, Lloyd wasn't very lovable. He was, he was a challenging student. But when he left for the day, she said, thank you and I love you to Lloyd. And I guarantee you, if you found him and you said, what do you remember about Miss Schaefer? He'd say that. He would remember that moment. And I know what you pour into your students is more than just what happens when the bell rings at the beginning and the bell rings at the end of the day. You go home and you worry about them. You go home and you worry about how to help help them progress. You go home and you beat yourself up about what you could have done differently to help them. Not because you love your job. Maybe you do. But you love the human beings you're interacting with. And that matters to students, uh, whether they know it or not. And then finally, maybe this is the most lighthearted one. What I learned as a uh, son of a teacher, uh, at least in the Schaefer household, my encouragement to you is the teacher is always right. (laughs) Now, don't publish that. You'll get me in trouble, right? But when I came home and I had a challenge at school, right, Mr. So-and-so did this, Mrs. So-and-so did that, it lasted about that long as mom's like, nope, teacher was right. Got to listen to the teacher, right? She knew being in the profession, like parents are difficult, right? Sometimes what's happening in the district is hard to understand, even if you're on board with it, right? And and it can be challenging, but she wanted me to remember that my role in that relationship was I was the child and student, and there was an authority figure who had their best interest for me, whether I knew it or not, right? So my encouragement to you is don't forget Maybe you're not always right, but you're mostly right. And at least in the Schaefer household, uh, you will be right or my mother will, uh, sh- she'll choke me uh, if, I, if I believe differently. Um, so th- thank you for being here this evening. Uh, as I close my remarks, uh, thank you for what you do for my children, for what you do for 60,000 other in this community, uh, each and every day, even when you don't feel like doing it, even when the kid, you just want to wring their neck, It matters to them. And stay encouraged. Your work matters. Your inspiration creates inflection points. Your love is irreplaceable. And at least in our household, teachers are always right. So thank you very much. Enjoy the evening. Thank you, Mr. Schaefer, for those very encouraging words. And um, thank you, Dr. Ryswick, for your words as well, and especially for your leadership. And now comes the moment we've all been waiting for. We will be presenting awards by region, so please keep that in mind. Our regional supervisors and directors will be handing out the awards. So I'd like to go ahead and invite them to uh, come on up, at least Region 1. And I also would like to invite Teresa Nixon, our Executive Director of Academic Supports, to the stage. And she's going to give us full instructions on how this evening's award process will go. Teresa? Thank you, Kim. And um, as we begin this evening, may I first just offer my congratulations to each and every one of you. Um, It is such an honor to be recognized as Teacher of the Year. Our district has thousands of amazing educators, and you being recognized by your colleagues is a tremendous affirmation. As Kim said, I'm going to share with you the process for the evening. We are going to be awarding by regions. As your name is called, we invite you to come over to this table on my left. You will see, you will get your plaque there. We would then ask you to walk in front of the stage. You do not need to step onto the stage. In front of the stage, over to this area here, where you will have two pictures taken which will be with board chair Betsy Henderson, your board member, and Dr. John Ryswick. Once your pictures have been taken, we will invite you 
to go to the far wall. We have a small gift for you to pick up as well, as you can um, then after that return to your seat. We will ask you as you are doing this to not cross any of the yellow taped line areas. Um, and as I'm gonna go ahead and give this for Justin Johnson for you. Um, he also said exits are safely in the back and the sides of the area as well. And with that, I'm gonna kick it off to region one. Hello, I'm Shelly Maddox, the Region 1 Supervisor, and we are so excited to be in this room full of talent and passion. And Danny, Trent, and I are honored to serve the teachers of Region 1. So let's get started. All right. For AL Lots Elementary, we have Amy Scheuer and Stacy Strauss, Strauss, I believe. For Bearden Elementary, Lisa Cranston. I'm going to have to go slowly so everyone doesn't get too backed up. For Bluegrass Elementary, em Emerson Silvestri. For Farragut Intermediate, we have Pamela Chalevich, Dacia Maxwell Hicks, and Amy Stedham. For Farragut Primary, we have Rhonda Hall, Heather Michelle McCamus, and Elizabeth Stewart. For North Shore Elementary, we have Sarah Burton, Allison Law, and Sarah Pope. For Pond Gap Elementary, Holly Roberts. For Rocky Hill Elementary, we have Natalia Erpenbach and Julie Schenlever. For Sequoia Elementary, Rachel Brantley. I'm going to pause just a moment to give us a little time to catch up. For West Hills Elementary, Kelly Boyd and Mary Lynn Jones. For Westview Elementary, Evelyn Napier. For Bearden Middle School, we have Corey Dugan, Stephen Jones, Lisa Jones Sexton, Sexton, and Luz Martinez. For Farragut Middle School, we have Katherine Cornett, Lindsay Jordan, Brooke Parton, and Caitlin Wood. <laughs> For 
Ready? Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes. Don't forget, teachers, once you've gotten your picture taken, you're going to want to go over to the far right and get your um, box over there with Teresa and Keith waving that way. So if you skip that, go on, head back over there. For West Valley Middle, we have Rebecca Guerin, Michelle Swafford, and Mel Melinda Varton. And I apologize for any mispronunciations. I did a lot of homework. For Bearden High School, we have Beth Falls, Nick Fout, Logan Peterson, Tyler Place, and Autumn Zuranovsky. For Farragut High School, we have Elizabeth Blankenship, Ben Collins, Ryan Linger, Chelsea Osborne, Laura Smythe, and Abigail Swenson. And for West High School, Kim Batkin, Laura Davis, Florence Fillers, Dustin Lyles, and Sam McElfresh. Let's give one more round of applause for all of the Region 1 Teachers of the Year. All right, guys, we're going to get started with Region 2. My name is Nathan Langlois. I'm the director of Region 2. And I want to also talk about my partner at large, Christy Dow, standing to the side. I just want to say uh, it is a great honor for us to stand up here and recognize all the Teacher of the Year from Region 2, as well as the Teachers of the Year from other regions. And they told me go slow, so I'm going to go slow. So first up, from Amherst Elementary, we have Brittany Newton and Emily Spangler. Next, from Ball Camp Elementary School, we have Karen Bueller. From Cedar Bluff Elementary, we have hmm, I think it's Kitty DeFranco 
Laura O'Brien, and Brooke Young. Probably did that wrong, huh? Whose name did I say? Amy. I had to apologize. Uh, next up from Harden, Harden Valley Elementary, we have Jessica Everett, Denise Malone, and Clayton Moultrie. Next, from Kearns Elementary School, we have Misty Dodge, Nova Grove, and Marty Van Patton. Oh, and Rebecca McGee. Congratulations. Next, from KCS Virtual, we have Alexandria Cochran and Anthony Gardner. Next, from Mill Creek Elementary, we have Ginger McNeely. Next, from Norwood Elementary, we have Eric Aguilar and Monica Brown. From Pleasant Ridge Elementary, we have Stephanie Miles. From Powell Elementary, we have Joy Kay and Jennifer Melton. From West Haven Elementary, we have Felicia Fowler. Congratulations. From Cedar Bluff Middle, Maureen Schenk and Jessica Wise. From Hardin Valley Middle School, we have Sarah Henderson, Mary Moore, and Ari Roma. Okay. From Carnes Middle School, Kendi Gilmore, Catherine Musteller, 
and Valerie Murin. That was both of you. Congratulations. From Northwest Middle School. Brooke Craney, Heidi Hartwell Fortner, Honey Lewis, and Dennis McNulty. From Powell Middle, Nicole McGee and Jessica Mitchell. From Hardin Valley Academy, we have Brooke, Bianchi Pennington, Rudy Furman, Lisa Jacobs, Jerry Parker, and Ann Thomas Abbott. Barely seeing something. Okay. I'm, get, I'm getting old. <clears throat> From Carnes High School, we have Bethany Burnett, John Clegg, Kylie Hayward, Sean Knapp, and Brock Webster. And last but never least, we have Powell High School, Joseph Caldwell, Diane Carcello, Alex Hibbett, and Whitney Rowlett. Congratulations to all the Region 2 recipients.
Good evening. Thank you for coming tonight. We're going to get started with Region 3 Teachers of the Year. I'm Megan O'Dell. I'm the director with Region 3. Also, Tommy Watson's up here helping us out. He's supervisor with Region 3, and we'll be handing out our Teachers of the Year. Let's start with Bonnie Kate Elementary. We have Margie Abbott Weaver and Hannah Harris. Carter Elementary, Dakota Marshall, and Alejandra Mendoza Berry. Chilhawi Intermediate, Jason Wilder. Dogwood Elementary, Renee Ragel and Casey Shanklin. East Knox County Elementary, Megan Carr and Amy Shipman. Gap Creek Elementary, Kaylin Lancaster. Moreland Heights Elementary, Sarah Hume. Mount Olive Elementary, Appen Lee. New Hopewell Elementary, Mitzi Burnett. South Knoxville Elementary, Jennifer Ramsey Allen. Sunnyview Primary, Allie Umbarger. <laughs> 
Carter Middle School, Haley Kidd, and Amanda Ramsey. South Dool Middle School, Heather Kilgore, Mandy McNeely, and Jennifer Sauer. Career Magnet Academy, James Anderson. Carter High School, Hunter Grubb, Todd Pate, and Jess Sherrod. Congratulations. Ellen in STEM Academy, Patrick Tiller. <laughs> Paul Kelly Volunteer Academy, Sarah Blackestone. In South Dole High School, Taylor Massey, Carolyn Walker, and Erica Wolfenbarger. Thank you. Let's give one more round of applause for all of our Region 3 Teachers of the Year. Hey, good evening. My name is Adam Parker. I'm supervisor of Region 4, and I'd like to introduce Cindy White, who's director of Region 4, who'll be helping me with handing out awards. We do want to say congratulations and what an honor it is to recognize our Region 4 teachers this evening, and of course, all of our Knox County teachers. We'd like to start this evening with Adrian Burnett and recognizing Amanda Comparato and Melinda Valentine.
from Bricky McLeod, Brad Caps, Shana Cole, and Larry Israel. From Copper Ridge Elementary, Deborah Majors. From Corrington Elementary, Allison Patterson. Congratulations. That's so good. I love From Fountain City Elementary, Michelle Moore. <laughs> From Gibbs Elementary, Shelby Lingenfelter, Naomi Stubblefield, and Holly Whittle. From Halls Elementary, Tracy Beeler, Brooke Settles, From Inskip Elementary, Zachary Morris and Samantha Peck. From Rita Elementary, Michaela Dodge and Elizabeth Abbotson. From Shenandoah Elementary, Megan Lay. And from Sturkey Elementary, Kelly Morlock. From Gibbs Middle, Beth Peterson and Kelsey Ward. From Gresham Middle, Maggie Burst, Lucy Gillo, and Tyler Prohaska. From Halls Middle, Marla Crossley, Tammy Harder Long, 
and Dinah Lane. From KAEC, Abby Keatron. Your girl's here. Right. From Central High School, Joyce Gallant, Jessica Keith, Nicole Millsap, and Andrew Turner. From Gibbs High School, Greg Pomeroy, Jennifer Williams, and Laura Zahn. From Halls High School, Mike Kerr, Heidi Moles, and Doug Polston. From Richard Yokely School, Kyla Johnson and Hubert Robertson. And lastly, Ridgedale School, David Farmer and William West. Again, congratulations to all of our Region 4 Teachers of the Year. We appreciate all of your hard work and commitment to your students. All right, good afternoon. My name is Dexter Murphy. And we're, I'm here to represent our honorees for Region 5. We're going to round this thing out with Region 5. And my supervisor, Salee Reynolds, uh, she could not be here tonight because she is uh, congratulating the new arrival of her grandbaby. But we have Salee, uh, Sydney White's going to help us present as well. So let's give her a round of applause for helping us. All right. So in Region 5, we're going to start with Beaumont Magnet Academy with Jessica Petrie Armstrong and Jessica Reiner. Morris Elementary, Melinda Fergerty. <laughs> From Christenberry Elementary, Amy Dockery and Susan Strange. Green Magnet Academy, Sarah Comperi. From Lonsdale Elementary, Lindsay Chapman and Morgan Hatcher.
from Maynard Elementary, Lucille Wheaton. Sarah Moore Green Magnet Academy, Terry Barlow, Samantha Bolton, and Megan Wallace. From Spring Hill Elementary, Trey Lemons and Karma Shirk. Holston Middle School, Natalie Elkins, and Katrina Whipple. From Vine Middle Magnet, Lisa Kraus and Adam Wilborn. From Whittle Springs Middle, Vincent Caridi and Cassandra Skinner. From Austin East Magnet High, Jessica Allen, Glenda Crawford, and Skykeela Smith. And from Fulton High School, Cassie Gooch, Tara Lee Johnson, Ashley Limbaugh, and Summer Ward. Let's give our mighty Region 5 educators a round of applause, please. Good evening. At this time, we will recognize our preschool teachers of the year. And we are very excited this year because we have two new standalone preschools. So we are a total of four standalone preschools. We are small, but we are mighty. So first, we want to recognize Molly Schmidt from Cedar Bluff Preschool. Pamela Hall from Fair Garden Family Center. Amy Levy from Fort Sanders Educational Development Center. And Corinne Moss from Carnes Preschool. Congratulations, our awesome preschool teachers and our other teachers of the year. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone so much. Can we please give one more round of applause for this year's teacher of the year? This time, Dr. Ryswick is uh, on stage to introduce our district winners of the year. 
Thanks so much, Kim. Uh, that was exciting. Definitely exciting. All right. So now for the three big ones. Here we go. Uh, now it's my pleasure to announce the Teacher of the Year winner for each grade band. Our first honoree is a K-5 computer science and career exploration teacher who created uh, the competitive robotics team at her school and organizes its annual STEM night. She also helped create the Next Tech Girls group at her school and encourages female students to learn about engineering. Let's see more of her story. In this operating room, my name's Surgeon Lillian. I like challenges. I like to be pushed and I think that's where we find our own growth. I also think that's where we learn what we're capable of. You're starting to class up. In STEM, we talk about the why. And in this class, we talk about the how and the application. So we're getting to try on these careers. And yes, there is always going to be a STEM piece in every job you do with the technology, the math, the science piece. But we're diving less into those science standards and less into the why and more into the how do we apply. Did everybody get to do a stitch? Yeah. One, I hope they realize the depth of these jobs, but also the breadth of the career market, right? There's so many jobs that we don't consider so often that we want to make sure that we consider all of these careers that are out there. A kid cannot choose a career if they don't know it exists. And I can't tell you how many times I've had conversations with parents or even other teachers who didn't know that job was available when they were in school and they say, I wish I had had this class when I was that age so I would have even known this job was existing. School is about academics, but it's also about the ability to do other things outside of our reading and writing. And giving kids value and self-esteem and hands-on tasks can also be uplifting for them to realize they have these abilities and that other students in their class see their abilities too. A huge piece of this class is understanding my value isn't just in can I read and write at school, it's other skills that I can bring to the table too. Practical skills and life skills. All right, please help me congratulate, yep, from Hardin Valley Elementary, Jessica Everett. in Education is donating to each one of our district winners, winners a gift basket valued at approximately $1,500. All right, our next winner is a performing arts teacher whose students have performed at Dollywood and Walt Disney World. More than 16,000 community members have watched their students perform, and in April they'll present their 15th Broadway-style musical. Let's see more of her story. I never really saw myself as a teacher. I kind of always thought I would be on the performing side, and I'm never, ever sorry. Yeah, can we do at 16 with you guys? I love my kids so much. We talk often that we're family and show choir, and it's so true. I've been through a lot with, with, I mean, I've been at this for 15 years with the show choir at Holston, but you, you get to the place where you've gone through so many phases of life with kids. Especially in middle school, because um, they come in and they're these tiny little afraid, you know, really naive beings, and they blossom into these, you know, young adults by the time they're walking out the door. They've grown physically, they've grown vocally, they've grown mentally. I always try to find something special about every kid and something that can help me connect to them, whatever that is. And you always have the tough ones, the ones that you, you know, you gotta work a little harder on. And then you have ones that it's like, it's a natural, you know, click. It's just instantaneous. It's like your love and their love are the same. We have self-control. It's why we show up for work every day. I mean, I, I probably get a little teary-eyed thinking about that because um, there's, there's those times that you do see that light bulb go off and you're like, oh! Yes, this is why. I mean, this is, this is it. That's the it for me. One more time. I want to make sure that the discipline that they've learned in my classroom is something that they carry for the rest of their life. That's a life skill, you know, to be able to have intrinsic motivation 
where you know we're not always just working for a prize or we're not working for money or whatever it is, we do it because we love it. And, and that's something I feel like they will carry with them forever. From Holston Middle School, please join me in congratulating Miss Natalie Elkin. Our final high school, our final winner is from high school is a social studies teacher <clears throat> who helped serve, who helped students create multiple community service initiatives. He has partnered with the University of Tennessee's Baker Center to bring guest speakers to the classroom and to arrange visits to UT's campus. Let's learn more about his story. Just picks all the candidates from one party when they go. I like to think I'm not that far removed. Um, from being a student myself and so trying to focus on how I learned as a student kind of helps me think about how they're going to learn the content as well. So therefore, here's why you should vote for us. I'm incredibly blessed that most of my students really want to be here and really want to learn. Um, and so the, engaging the ones who are a little bit more reluctant uh, requires me to kind of think about what do they care about and how can I relate it to them. Engaging with uh, where people have been before um, and, and then using that to inform kind of where we're going next is something that really spoke to me in my history classes uh, and then being able to share that with students today as they're the ones who are going to carry us forward from here kind of just puts it all together. We start on day one where I tell them, um, <laughs> might sound a little harsh but I think they take it the right way, um, I don't care what their politics are. I'm not going to share my politics with them and, and so we're here to learn about the way that the systems operate, what the two different ideologies believe and, and what the, the parties represent uh, and then they can make their own decisions from there. My goal as a social studies educator is a high quality civics education uh, for my students and I want them to be able to engage with their community on a high level when they leave here um, and I think that's the key to uh, the continued success of our, our nation and the continued success of them so that's what gets me here is like that's why I know I'm here um, so it makes it easy to come to work every day for sure. From Bearden High School, please join me in congratulating Logan Peterson. adjourn but before we do that we have a great little game we like to play so I'm gonna ask each of you to stand if you will it's not hard I promise not hard okay you're competing against the people at your table so we just need one person standing at each table at the end so I've got an order and we're gonna flip this quarter. And if you beforehand call heads, you're gonna go heads. If tails, what are we gonna do? Tails. Okay, so this is our official flipper. Right now, make your choice, heads or tails. Okay, you gotta hold it. All right, what is it? Heads. Heads, if you chose tails, sit down. All the heads stay standing and pick your new one. You can change. And if you're the winner of the table, stay standing. Right. Heads or tails? Choice? All right. All right, here we go. Tails. All the heads sit down. 
All right. I need one from each table. I need a winner. All right, one more time. Choose, heads or tails? All right. Tails. Tails. All the heads, sit down. All right, where have we still got two at a table? Okay. All right, choose opposite. Heads or tails? All right, heads or tails? Tails. All right. That should make the winner. The winner of each table, please take home the centerpiece. And underneath is a Chick-fil-A gift card for you as well. Have a wonderful evening. Again, congratulations to all of our Teacher of the Year 2024. Thank you. Safe travels.